Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. I told you never to call me here. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome back to Math Break Studio. And today we're going to be looking at, or this episode, we're looking at uh, animating text in motion. And Mark's going to take us on that journey right now. I am. Yes. I am. So, yeah. yeah, animating text in motion is, is awesome and really, really fun to do. Uh, so I th and I thought I'd, I'd demonstrate an example and show a little hidden thing that, that, that's very hard to find on your own to solve, <laughs> solve an issue, okay? I love so, those little obscure things that you can't find on your yeah, spot. There's no documentation for it. And, well, it's something uh, you'd never know, and we provide value. That's what we do, right? So it's like- We it's unearth the yeah, hidden yeah, gems you're gonna find of motion. And, yes. and I need, I use this on a recent job, so it's a real, real world experience. Okay. So here's a setup. I have some text in a motion project, mm -hmm. okay? That's our starting point. And I don't want this simple black background, so I'm just, you can always put a generator back there and, or a color solid, or you could put a, you know, a rectangle. But another way. Just to change the know, color of the background. Sorry. <laughs> you keep doing that now. Sorry. Like you already, you know it all. <laughs> you know it all. So if I select the project in the layers list um, mm -hmm. or hit Command J to go to the project properties, I can change the background color, as you mentioned. Before I do, because I'm going to zoom out. Right now, it's going to be transparent no matter what color it is. Okay. In other words, if, if we were to publish this to Final Cut or render it out a movie, you wouldn't see the background. So I'm going to make it solid. Uh, we won't talk in environment unless you want to explain to everybody what environment means. I didn't think so. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'll go to solid. And, um, and then I'm just going to change. I just, I just want some kind of different color. So yeah, we said we'd. That's the Facebook. Yeah, we'll kind of pick a Facebook color, right? So um, some more interesting to look at. So. Here's the deal. Um, I'm also going to set a play range out about two seconds, Command Option O, and start playback. And um, if you didn't already know, in the library, uh, in behaviors, let me just zoom in here a little bit, in behaviors, there's a whole bunch of behaviors for animating text. Uh, four doesn't seem like a lot, but if you go to text sequence, there's folders here, six wow. folders, and each, each one of these has Dozens and dozens and dozens. I'll just I'll open one text basic and you know there's a lot of stuff in here, right? Sure. Whoa, to, to animate text. So I generally skip all that. Um, although I, I do use them, I, I definitely use them, but sometimes I like to build my own. And this is where if you're learning motion, this is a really fun exercise where you'll learn a lot out, out of it. So I'm gonna take this thing called sequence text. So just quick aside, th yeah. th you like yeah. to use sequence text because you can it has a maximum amount of kind of uh, uh, modif Modifiability yeah. or think about it this way: this guy, sequence text, is the tool with which all the presets were built. Okay, They're all built it. out of this. That's an important point. Yeah. You know, so we're doing exactly what the designers of Motion did to build all the presets in there. So we're just making our own. So this is kind of where you start to build a sequencing animation. Exactly. Thank you. That was definitely helpful. So I'm going to drag it on to the text, and it does nothing by default. And um, one thing, my playback is generally phenomenal, and this is this retina display is great, but because we're driving this other monitor to record, the, the playback is affected, so we're not going to quite see the performance I'd like to see. But I'm going to hit O for, a play, for a, a play range out point. I just want the sequence text to act on the text for the first second or half or so. And now check this out. We have, let me actually stop playback for here. We have on the screen, um, this is called the adjust item tool. Okay, you can see my, my little cursor is now missing the shaft. Did you have to switch um, a, to a tool? I didn't see no, you switch a by, tool. No, because I added the sequence text behavior, it switched to it. Stood, okay, in fact, good. if I switch back to the text, there. Um, I got it. Uh, my arrow's back to normal, and there we have this tool. So the cool thing about this is you can create animation just by moving this thing around. So for example, I'll zoom out. If I drag this M up, it looks like they all move up, but if I play, are you, so just to be clear, it looks like yeah. you're only adjusting the first character, and then the rest kind of follow suit in it's sequence. In as sequence, it were? that's exactly oh. what it's doing. So let me let me undo that. So and if you rotated it, they all should rotate then. Yeah. So exactly. It's like I didn't. Even, you already knew that. <laughs> I just stand here. Right. And let me yeah, know. No, but it's, right. in fact, I'm gonna hold the shift key down while I rotate, so I go exactly 90, exactly 180. Okay. Okay. So now when I play, uh, oh, nice. these just kind of flip up, which is kind of cool, right? Yeah. Very cool. Now. Um, one thing I want to do is say each one after the other go, plip, 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 and I want a smoother type of animation. So what I'm going to do is increase the spread amount, and now we see... Oh, nice. Yeah, isn't that kind of pretty? Just kind of folds so, up. It seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that 
the spread controls when the animation gets acted on on the next character. It, pretty much, yeah. it controls how many characters at a given point in time are being animated. Okay. So the total animation time is the same. It still lasts the duration of this purple bar, the, the behavior here, you know, about a right. one and a half seconds. Um, again, it's it's going slow because they're driving this monitor. Because the fun thing about this is you're designing in real time, so you're not fully getting the sense of this because we're recording this, but you can sort of watch the animation happen. So another thing, just actually, I'll get to that point last. Here's some, what's it rotating around? In other words, when these rotate, what are they rotating around? The, uh, some sort of baseline, I would guess. Yeah, it sure looks that way. They're rotating around around that, at about this part, point right there, that baseline. And that's actually not what I want in this case. I'd really like these to rotate around themselves, like in the center. Okay. And you might think um, anchor point. In other words, if I just, I'm gonna hit R for the rectangle tool and draw a quick rectangle, escape. That's the anchor point of an object, okay? It's the point around which an object rotates. Scales. I'll undo that and scales, right, if I scale it. Uh -huh. um, so that's just the general idea. And you think like, oh, well, I, I want to affect the anchor point. You know, if I select that text layer, it's anchor point. Let's go to where it's fully up. That's its anchor point. Like, oh, if I move the anchor point up, it'll fix this. It'll it'll. Something tells correctly. me it's not. Going yeah, to so do I'll move the anchor point in the middle. Oh. Um, but if we play this, look, it hasn't changed. No, it's still, still baseline. still adding from the baseline. So changing the anchor point won't do it for you. I'm going to hit shift S just to get out of the tool. So that's... That's the kind of the crux of this thing, besides playing with this kind of stuff. And by the way, um, I, all I did was rotate it. You could also move it. So if I move it off to the left, you know, now they rotate up and move and over. Squish or pull apart. Yeah. And you don't want to see them the whole time. So now I want to, I want to add something else to animate. Actually, let me undo that. I just want them to flip up. But as they flip up, I, want, I don't want to see them when they're flipped down, right? I want this to animate on the screen. So I'm taking a little side. I'll come back to the anchor point in a minute. I'm going to go to the inspector, to the behaviors tab, and this is where all the detail is for the sequence text behavior. Yes. Right now we're animating rotation. And we did it directly in the viewer, uh, in the canvas. Sorry, I'm thinking Final Cut Pro 10 now. Um, directly in the canvas, but we could have gone into here and, and changed the value. So um, opacity you cannot manipulate in the canvas, but I can choose to add format opacity, okay? And then take opacity to zero, and now if we play, um, each letter starts rotated 180 degrees and invisible, and becomes visible and you know, appears right. okay, on the screen. So, but I still have this anchor issue. And um, I, I kind of searched long and high. You can sort of drag this guy up. So if I, let's go forward again. If I drag this up in Y, It'll seem like it's doing the right thing, but it's, it's, it's not. It's, it's still kind of like going around no, it. Yeah, it's still not. Yeah, it's yeah. going around. What, it's, what I'm doing is I'm changing the position um, of the initial starting letter. So if I like, I drag this way down, the letters start really low, right? And they're moving up. That's all they're doing. It's just changing position over time. That's not what I want. I want them to rotate around the center of each letter. Right. So the way to do that. So this is the kind of art thing that you're not going to yeah. find anywhere easily. Um, you go to the text inspector. And then you go down, and there's a section. Well, first, let's go to this, the format, sorry, layout. So there's format, style, and layout. So we're in the text inspector in the layout section. Layout controls, behavior controls. Because this is really the behavior. It's text sequencing behavior. Yeah, yeah. I, let's, let's say that's why. Um, <laughs> let's say that's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a behavior. It's controlling right. behavior. Right. So position X, position right. Y. And so what you can do, I'm just going to drag in position Y and notice. Well, look at that. It looks like it's changing the position of that little adjust item tool, but it's not. It's actually changing the where they rotate. So if we look at this thing happen now, see how each letter is rotating around itself, okay? Right. And let's let's decrease the spread a little bit. And maybe increase it a little bit. Make sure I have the opacity turned all the way down. It doesn't seem like it's gets at zero. Okay, so now each letter is rotating around, around itself. Yeah. yeah, and depending on how much spread you add is depending on kind of how smooth that unfolds over time. So it really lets you manipulate exactly how this thing unfolds, uh, which can create a really beautiful animation. And you can take this really as far as you want because all of these things are keyframable as well, um, which gets really interesting as you play with it. I'll just give you one example to think about going forward. So let's say we also are animating position, format position, and we're going to start with these letters 
um, way uh, up high. Okay, so now we have something where they're starting up high and dropping down. But I could have set a keyframe for that. So I could say they start up high, but then halfway through, um, I'll set a keyframe, just option clicking on the keyframe, and then I'll come down and I don't need to set a second keyframe, I just change the value. So now they start out high, they flip on, and they end up going low at the end. It's interesting, in this sense, you're actually combining a behavior with and the keyframes. Key yes, that's exactly, and that's where it can get really interesting, because you can do the same thing. Let's set a keyframe partway through for position uh, in Y, I'll go forward, and I'm sorry, in X, and I'll drag X to the right, just to get another idea of something you can do. So now they come down and kind of shoot out as they come in. So you can do some really interesting things. One thing I'm finding that's looking a little odd in this one is that the opacity is not taking the full time. You shouldn't see that M fully animate its opacity on until it's in place. And uh, a little surprised that it's doing that. So I'm just going to remove opacity and add it back in again because you really shouldn't see that yet. And you can actually go to, you can choose face opacity instead. So let's try that one instead. Yeah, it's still, it's like- Oh, I, I know why. Why? I think. Because in a sequence text behavior, you have the option to sequence a word, a character, a line. Maybe right. it's because it's it's doing it to the entire line. Well, it's it's choosing by character. Okay. So that that's that a, was great, a good guess. That's, it's a great guess. It's a great guess. <laughs> and you know, again, this is something I've done uh, five or six times. It's worked perfectly. But of course, now the opacity is coming on sooner than it should because you shouldn't see any of those letters show up. In fact, let's file open recent um, just to show another example where I've combined two of these together to create text animation where one appears and one disappears. Well, that's a really cool effect, Mark. That's so you can have one, so this is just taking two of them together and reversing one of them, where they animate right in the middle. That does look, okay. that looks really cool. So that's, cool. that's how it's supposed to look. That looks okay. really cool. It looks really cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, what I encourage you to do is play around with this text sequence behavior, and by going into the text inspector to the layout section using those behavior controls, you really have a lot of control over exactly where the anchor point is. Well, it's is. funny that there's the whole like behavior parameter controls yes. in the inspector, yes. which I would have never thought to look yeah, there that, for. That's, Did that, you discover that just, oh, look what this yeah, is. Yeah, it's been snuck oh, in there, wow. yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, but it cool. really so, lets you do something. So motion, st you're still learning is what I hear you saying. Oh yeah, always, there's always something else to figure out. Okay. And this uh, this thing just keeps going and going. It's a, it, it goes deep, yeah. Excellent. Well, there you have it. There's a, you can make start playing around in, uh, in motions. Uh, awesome behaviors and text animation tools. And if you want more, uh, rippletraining.com has hours and hours and hours, dare I say hours, of motion training from this guy. So check us, check them out, and uh, we'll see you back next time in the next uh, episode of MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching.